Hey Jonesy Babes and Anonymous Jonesy Babes, welcome back to my channel. So we are here to talk about another Wade Wilson jail call. All right, and this time it's two calls. One with Kristen, Kiosk Kristen, and the other one is with the interview from the media. So the first one, the interview from the media. Um, the interviewer asked, did he get the questions? And he said he did get it, but his machine was taken away from him to be given to someone else to use. And he said he just got it back while they were on the phone. You know, so it's like, okay, they send you the questions that you look over and get familiar with, but you couldn't answer back or you couldn't like, you know, whatever, do whatever with the questions because <laughs> they had to give it to somebody else. I don't know. It sounds like he's lying, but I'm not there to see it, but let's just say it happened. Okay. But anyway, Wade asks um, the interviewer when will his interview will be on the news or will it be will it be on TV? And she says she don't know because you know she can't give an exact date and time. She doesn't really have a, a deadline, so she told him that she didn't know basically. And he asked her, you know, well, um, when you do Eric, can you put my GoFundMe out there? Wade knows exactly what he is doing. He knows there are women out there going Google for him. Okay. He got lovesick fans out there. And by him putting his GoFundMe out there while he's while his interview is being played, it's bringing traffic to his GoFundMe so that those women that are so in love with him can donate money to the GoFundMe. Okay. Um... <laughs> Jesus, he is not slick. It's all about what he wants. Okay, it's all about what he wants. And it's like she's she's on the phone with you to get an interview from you. So you know what's the problem? But you know, you you know you're not gonna get something from him if he can't get anything in return. That's the kind the type of vibes I get from him. All right, so. You know, so basically he's trying to like make a deal. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Um, but he's also saying that he could put her name down on the kiosk because he's willing to do a live interview. So now he's really trying to get on TV. All right. So, you know, she asked him about what happened on October 6th. And, you know, Wade tells his side of the story and everything. And he says that, you know, he has a Hellcat that belongs to him and Mila, which it doesn't belong to him. It's Mila and her, her ex-boyfriend, Glenn's Hellcat. And I'm not mistaken, it's her ex-boyfriend, Hellcat. So, it has nothing to do with him. And, you know, he's telling the interviewer about... um. You know, meeting up, you know, taking Christine back to her house, and they was partying and stuff like that. But they was partying at the guy's house, and then they went to her house. But he left out a lot of stuff. He left out a lot of stuff. Well, first of all, let's talk about how he left Mila at the Buddha bar, okay, to go be with some other chick. If that's not disrespectful, I don't know what is. And why did she even tolerate him? You get what I'm saying? Like, you go to the Buddha bar with your with your girlfriend and some other girls and a guy is there. So y'all leave and you take the Hellcat, which you can't even drive because it's a stick shift. All right. So your homeboy driving it, y'all go to his house and you know, he doesn't want to go to the other girl's house, Christine's house. So he said, you no, know, they left, went to Christine's house to buy Uber because he can't drive a Hellcat, but he tried to drive it. You know, he he said he got like 20 yards away from the house and it ran out of gas. <laughs> Jesus, man. But anyway, so at Christine's house, he kept calling her um, Chris, Kristen, but her name is Christine. Um, they get to Kristen's house, Christine's house, I'm sorry. And, you know, he said that they, you know, was being intimate and everything. Um, partying means, you know, to him means intimate. To me, when I hear the word partying, when somebody say, yeah, we about to party, it could be one or two things. We about to have a nice party with music going on, or we're going to be, you know, sniffing that booger sugar. That's what the two partying means to me. 
So I did not know that partying means to be intimate. Okay, because all I know that when you go partying, you want to have a good time dancing or whatever. And then the other type of partying mean you on that booger sugar. But anyway, um, and so I guess, you know, the other girl left. And he said that the last time he saw Christine, she was alive, which we know is not true because he missed. He left out a whole lot. He unalived her. OK, in her home. We know that. He asked, he said he asked her for her, you know, he borrowed her car and her phone. No, Wade just took it after he did what he did. He took the phone and the car. But okay, that's, this is his story. And this is how he's telling it, right? Okay. So he says she was alive when he left and all that kind of stuff. The interview, then they give it, get the chance to ask him about um, Diane. Okay. She didn't even get a chance about that because he's running his mouth. And these people, like the interview, they're going to have to stop letting him control everything. When you want to speak to Wade, you have to take control because he likes to take control and run things and do what he wants to do. You can't do that. If you're an interviewer, there's no way in the world that he should have been talking as much as he was. She was there to get questions asked. But he's going on and on and on about. Okay. So he said he didn't consume any drugs that night now here's the interesting part when he was talking about Mila right he said that Mila is a madam but he calls her madame Mila is a madam and she runs you know a, a happy house <laughs> okay you know what I'm saying he, she runs a happy a happy house ring Okay, at the house of sweethearts. Let's just call it that. She runs the house of sweethearts, right? Out of her spa. He said he met her customers and he knows the ins and outs of her business. And I think this is his get back at her. I'm not sure if it's true. If she was doing that in her spa, I'm not sure. But I think that was his get back for her because when he found out she was recording him and then the, the media was there, he was kind of upset about it. So I think this part right here, when he was talking about her being a madam and stuff like that, and she runs like the, the sweetheart house, mm -hmm, I think that was a get back. That's what I think. Okay, so the phone call was getting ready to end. And he said, I'm, I'm going to have to call you back to the interviewer. And she said, okay, you can call me back. I'll be waiting for your call. Homeboy never called her back. He never calls her back. But guess who he calls? He calls Kristen. Honey, we got a two-for-one deal today. Um, so he calls Kristen, right? So she said the media tried to contact her. But how did the media get her phone number? Unless they pulled the, 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 the records from the kiosk, like the text messages, and saw her number there. But I don't know how they would get her number. But anyway, so she said the media tried to contact her. Um, Wade was telling her that he told the news people they have to pay him for his story, which is not true because he didn't mention any payment about anything. Okay, so he's he's a liar. We know he's lying right now, but she doesn't think so. Um, Kristen says she has a visit with him. You don't even know this guy like that. And you guys are already, you want to visit? Girl. All he wants, all he wants from Kristen is money. He wants to be taken care of. He wants someone to talk to so he doesn't go crazy in there. And he wants somebody to take care of him. That's all he wants from these women. Any woman that talks to him, he wants money. He wants to be taken care of. But you know what? Some of these women don't even care. Because guess what? Oh, he's handsome. Oh, Wade Wilson. You know, he's on the news. Oh my God, he's this and he's that. <sighs> Whatever. I, I, I don't I don't get the infatuation. I don't get the excitement. You know, I don't get the sex appeal or any of that like that coming from him. But these women are in a chokehold. 
they are in a chokehold for him. So Kristen was telling him that her daughter wants to write a book about him. And that, you know, they're going to make money off of it and all this kind of stuff. Anything that, that concerns money is music to his ears. Okay? That's what it is. So, um, Wade was telling her that, you know, telling Kristen that, you know, he saw some girls sitting in, I guess, in the waiting area or where he was at. He saw some girls there. They were waving at him and one of the girls flashed their boobs. I, I didn't know that they could do stuff like that or you go, you're going to risk it and put out a building because you flashing your boobs at somebody. Like, what is that doing for you or him? I don't get that. But that's the story he said. It probably wasn't even true. He probably was just testing her to see if she was going to be jealous. But, hey, whatever, right? Um, He's telling Kristen, you know, all this lovey-dovey stuff. He's grateful for her and, you know, he loves her and, they call each other baby and this, this, and that. And then he starts asking for money to buy clothes. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Butter him up like a biscuit. Because mm, mm, mm. he said he needs clothes. He needs thermals and other things. And she said, yeah, you know. And she's telling him, well, I don't get paid. But it's a, this day and that. Stop telling that man when you get paid. It's none of his business. Like, girl, keep some things private. You don't even know him. But anyway, and they talking about, you know, the phone was going to end. And it was like, I love you, babe. And she's like, I love you too, babe. How can you love somebody you don't even know? Oh, my God. Oh, I'm telling you, with these two, they remind me of Peanut and Pigpen. And you guys know who I'm talking about when I say that. I think they got them beat. I think Kristen and Wade got Peter and Pigpen beat. I do. Okay? I do. But at least, you know, Wade, he um he got fans and they 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 are putting up money for him. As far as Pigpen, honey, <laughs> nobody's he couldn't even get past, he couldn't even get to a hundred dollars on the GoFundMe. Now, you know that's bad. <laughs> but anyway, I'm done with this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, I love reviewing these and having discussions about it. I love talking about it. You know, because I also want to see, you know, how what you guys think about this whole Wade situation. And now that he, now that Kristen, Kiosk Kristen, then in, into the chat, how do you feel about her, you know, He's he just a user. That's all he is. He's going to use women to get whatever he wants. He doesn't care about anybody but himself. Okay? And I, I think he does care about his father. But it's all about what he can get. It's all about what he can get. He is all about Wade and nobody else. But anyway, that's all I have right now. I'll talk to you guys later.